Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Quilters Apothecary. I want to take a few minutes today and talk to my fellow surface quilters about how we want to handle quilting hand-pieced quilt tops. Whether it's traditional hand piece, where it's simply a pattern that's sewn together, or some of the wonderful and more popular new techniques such as English paper piecing. So let's come down to the quilt and let's have a look at it and I want to show you my method on how I handle those pieced quilts. Here on our first example I want you to see this beautiful hand pieced top and it's traditionally hand pieced. That means that when it was pieced it was pressed and the seams were pressed closed so they did not press them open. Um, now this has been in a closet for a period of time. I'm sure the person that made it, uh, I believe it was made in the uh, 50s or 60s, I believe is what I was told. Now when I go to quilt this, I could run into issues as I do the machine quilting where the seams could start to separate a bit. I don't want to put a whole lot of pressure on this particular quilt when I load it. So the technique that I'm going to show you is going to help with this. I also now want to show you the second example of why I would and when I would do the technique that I'm going to show you. Our next example is going to be on the English paper piecing. Now I like to order my paper pieces products from the paper pieces company and I have gotten bitten by the bug. They're amazing quilts. Now these two examples are English paper pieced and this is Lisa Evan, a good friend of mine who gave me and gifted me these two beautiful blocks. Now some of the other ones I've done, I've also done the grandmother's flower garden and here's a couple examples of those. These are really wonderful pieces to do in front of the TV if you want to do some handwork. Now the one thing I want to share with this if you haven't been exposed to the English paper piecing, what it is, it is cardstock that is uh, machine cut into the perfect shape and the fabric is wrapped around it and basted. And then once you have all your pieces, then you're going to be whip stitching these together. And so it is hand piece. Now I'm pretty OCD with this and I know that when I do my whip stitches I do approximately 14 stitches per inch and they're pretty tight so I know they can hold up to the machine quilting. Um, but a lot of people will after their 10 blocks or even 5 blocks into the project they'll start to get a little relaxed about how they piece it. So they might do stitches that are a quarter inch apart, a little bit loose. And again when you look at the back of this what you see all of the seams are open. So when you go to quilt this, um, there's just a, a special way that I like to treat them, which helps add stability to the customer's piece or your own personal pieces. So let's talk about that. This wonderful piece that I'm getting ready to quilt now was done by a friend of mine, Mary Dormsetter Miller. And it's actually from the book, The New Hexagon, by a wonder, another wonderful friend of mine, Katja Merrick. And it's an incredible book, it's a great quilt, and I absolutely love it and I can't wait to quilt it. Actually, I started mine the same time Mary started hers, I just haven't finished, so I, I am actually quilting hers first. Um, now, before we quilt it, let's go over how I would handle this a little bit differently than I would a normally pieced quilt. At this point what I've already done is I've loaded the backing and I've taken the batting and I've loaded the batting as well. I put a sew line horizontally right across using my channel locks. I have also loaded on the hexagon shaped quilt top that's English paper pieced. So the next thing I'm going to do, I've pinned this to my roller, I'm going to pull that out of the way. And now what I want to do is I want to take a layer of thin muslin and I'm going to lay that between the quilt top and the batting before I start doing the quilting. What that's going to do when I do the machine quilting is it's going to provide that extra layer of stabilization under the quilt top so that in the future if it, the quilt gets washed and the seams start to come apart you're not going to have batting coming through. It's going to add a lot of longevity to any hand pieced quilt. I've got my channel lock on and I'm taking this straight across and down and this will be perfectly stable. Okay. 
Okay, so now we have loaded the backing, the batting, and now on top, this piece of pre-washed muslin as a stabilizer so that now I can actually baste this edge of the new hexagon quilt and then start doing my quilting as normal. Now, because this is an odd shape, of course, what I would do is also baste down the edge and make sure that everything's straight as I go on here. And that is how I would handle quilting a hand-pieced quilt. And there we go. That gives you another option of how to handle hand-pieced quilts. One of the things that I know as a surface quilter is I'm starting to see a lot more of the hand-pieced quilts come to me. I'm also starting to see a lot more quilts with the uh, seams ironed open. Now, if I have a quilt where there's a lot of open seams, I'm going to actually handle that exactly the same way. I'm going to put a thin piece of muslin between the quilt top and the batting so that it will stabilize so that if those seams start to come apart, we don't have to worry about the batting migrating up through it. And remember, we have a whole generation of piecers that are beginning to pass away. And so people are going through their stuff and they're finding all these beautiful hand piece quilt tops. So as professional quilters, we're going to see a lot of this and we need to know how to handle them so that they can remain wonderful heirlooms for generations to come. So I hope you enjoyed that little tutorial. I want you all to have a wonderful day. Know you're loved and take care of each other and we will see you down the road. 